Do you wish to triumph over every foe that stands in your way? Do you wish to triumph consistently? Welcome everyone in today's video. We're going to tell you how to win at everything. Do you want to achieve your most significant goals in life and be a great winner? Recall that winning is a way of thinking and living and that only those who never give up eventually succeed in life, regardless of what they don't win. But before we proceed the further video, if you're new to this channel, remember ahead and to hit the bell icon to subscribe so you won't miss the informative videos we will upload in the future. Step wish your definition of success in life. Describe your definition of success in life. What does a successful life look like to you? What are you doing when you look back on yourself in three to four years? What, in your opinion, prevents you from being the most successful version of yourself? Which are some amazing qualities about you that you ought to practice and nurture a bit more? Start with simpler inquiries if these are too tough, such do you live in a city or the country? Which would you prefer, working from home or using charity to save the world? Perhaps all you desire is more free time to engage in your interests. Whatever the event, winners locate the finish line and make travel plans accordingly. Worthwhile objectives aren't always simple. You should never let the length or difficulty of a work deter you from attempting it. Anything that is supposed to change will do so without difficulty. This is not to argue that you shouldn't contribute or that you shouldn't put in the effort necessary to affect change. However, if you find yourself exerting a lot of effort to force it, it may indicate that you're approaching it incorrectly which will lead to a great deal of frustration and disappointment. Step two, a complete the preparatory tasks required for achievement. Make the preparations required to be successful. Champions understand that achieving success necessitates preparation prior to the event or challenge because bad performance is prevented by prior preparation. Take a few hours to sit down and write out the following questions and your responses. What are the most likely things to go wrong? How can I avoid troubles or problems before they arise? What resources tolls do I need to succeed? And what actions can I do right now to guarantee success later? Step three, never stop learning, particularly in the areas you find enjoyable. Never stop learning, particularly in the areas you find enjoyable. Champions are never know-it-alls. Actually, it's the opposite. Winners understand that information is power and that there is never enough of it. Attend conferences and lectures that pique your interest, learn a new skill, and read a journal article every day in your subject. While you should concentrate on your area of expertise, keep in mind that ideas are everywhere. Whatever you do, you will always succeed if you have an open mind. Make an effort to be a sponge and take in as much knowledge as you can at all times. You will learn more the more you push yourself. Going the harder or longer way usually results in greater experience and expertise. Step four, work on your objectives every day rather than in large blocks of time. Instead, then working on your goals in large chunks, work on them daily. This is similar to the difference between studying daily and studying all night the night before an exam. Both might be sufficient to get you through, but the knowledge gained from cramming is rapidly lost. If you work on anything every day, you make considerably more progress, creating strong brain connections and momentum that will increase your efficiency and success in the future. Having said that, it's not the end of the world, so try not to punish yourself if you skip a day. The idea is to practice regularly and on a set timetable to improve your goals. Simply mount back up the following day. Let's take a break. Review your objectives and regularly make any necessary improvements. Take a moment to review your objectives and, if necessary, make regular revisions. A winner doesn't merely choose a path and go down it without thinking. They are always scanning their environment, ready to change course if a better opportunity or concept presents itself. Effective analysis is simple, even though every scenario is unique. Take five to ten minutes to sit quietly and pose the following question. What problems exist right now? How successful was my last fix? What has transpired since my previous planning session? What can I do right now to achieve the best potential outcome? Step six, examine the practices of the greatest in your industry. Examine the practices of the greatest in your industry. For instance, you should definitely pay attention to Elon Musk, Warren Buffett, and other financial titans if you want to control the world of finance. If you want to be a musician, study how your idols honed in on the bits that resonate with you via practice. 
try to delve further into the habits that other winners have that have led to their success rather than copying their lifestyle. The thing that all winners have in common is unquestionably their extensive practice. Even the greatest took many hours to achieve their goals, from Bill Gates sequestered in a room with early computers to the Beatles performing all-night concerts in Germany. Good practice is difficult and requires effort. In order to train for climbing the same climbs in the summer Tour de France, Lance Armstrong is well known for having taken his bike to the Alps during the winter. Step says, use setbacks as opportunities rather than obstacles. Consider setbacks as opportunities rather than obstacles. Successors view failure as a necessary obstacle to overcome rather than the end of the path. Success has always required overcoming setbacks since there are never any easy obstacles on the path to greatness. By viewing obstacles as challenges that, when overcome, will only make you stronger and better, you'll put yourself in a position to succeed in whatever you do. You have to learn and adjust quickly when faced with challenges. Keeping an open mind and being adaptable will help you deal with any challenge that comes your way. Step eight, set sensible priorities. What sensible priorities? For example, everyone has known someone who wants to write a great novel, but can never find the time. The issue lies not in their inability to find time, but rather in their failure to carve out time for themselves. Since you are the only one who can determine your schedule, develop the practice of ranking the tasks that are most important to you in order to ensure that you will complete them. No one else will prioritize your needs if you don't. Decide on a regular time each day to work on your objectives and assignments. Establishing a specific time for work makes it much simpler to maintain. It does need sacrifice to be a winner. If you prioritize working on your interests over lesser hobbies, smaller hobbies may receive less time and attention. Step nine, adopt a winning mindset. Possess a winning mindset. To achieve, you must prepare yourself mentally and psychologically, so have confidence in yourself. You will go farther than most people ever do if you believe that you can succeed. On the other hand, you won't have the drive to succeed in anything if you think you'll fail or have no chance. Remind yourself that you deserve to win and that you will indeed win. Having hope and hunger will keep you going when times are difficult. Method no two. Step one of method two play with strategy and method. Maintain your composure under pressure. Play with strategy and method. Maintaining your composure under pressure. The winner in a game that demands quick reflexes, such as sports or speed chess, is typically the one who maintains composure. Develop the practice of breathing deliberately and consistently while you play, and take your time to select the finest option each time you're up. It will be a lot simpler for you to look through the possibilities and select the greatest one if you're at ease and composed. Step two, examine your opponent's requirements and areas of vulnerability. Examine your opponent's requirements and areas of vulnerability. Consider breaking the inquiry down into smaller, more focused queries rather than attempting to figure out what your opponent is thinking. What must first happen for my opponent to win? Secondly, what vulnerability would I be concerned about if I were my opponent? Almost invariably, the responses to these two queries indicate a sensible course of act. Imagine you're playing tennis against someone who has a great serve but terrible net play. They'll try to hit it hard, forcing you to stay back on the baseline and avoid the net. But you should turn the tables on them and use slices and short strokes to drive them into the front court. Every time you play a board card or strategy game, consider what your opponent has left to do to win. How do you stop this from coming to them? Step three, look up the best tactics for your particular game. To look into the best tactics for your particular game. There are countless books available for chess players that explain moves, opponent reading, and long-term winning tactics. When it comes to card games, mathematicians and game theorists have dissected the tried and true strategies for winning practically every variant, many of which are available for free online. Instead, then attempting to learn everything by experience, research previous players' achievements and make use of them. Reading up on news and advice about a game does more for you than simply provide methods. It makes it easier to spot your opponent's approach when they try it and immediately counter it. Even athletes should read about new developments on a regular basis. Take American triple jumper Christian Taylor, for instance. Having studied science and research, he defied expectations by making shorter, faster jumps rather than longer, slower ones. At the 2016 Olympics, he went on to win the gold medal. 
Step four, look for trends with your eyes. You look for trends with your eyes. These could be the game's patterns or those of your rivals. Individuals find it difficult to be arbitrary and in general, will keep using the same strategies if they seem to be effective. You can control them to victory by staying aware of the general trends and patterns in the game. Don't just keep playing if the opposition is attacking most successfully along the left side. Determine how to close the gap on your team's left side. Most women throw paper and rock, paper, scissors, whereas most males throw rock first. As a result, you should always start with paper because it increases your chances of winning or tying. As you continue to play, keep an eye out for your opponent's identical sequences of moves so you can read them like a book. Stake use of randomness. Make the most of randomness. You can presume your opponent is doing the same thing while you're looking for patterns in them. Anytime you can introduce some uncertainty or merely alter your own tendencies, you can take them by surprise and obtain the upper hand. While some games do not permit unpredictability, you can typically outsmart your opponent by varying your strategies. Take shots from all around the box in games like soccer, for instance, rather than only when you get close to the goal. To keep them moving, force them to defend both within and outside the box. Stay random by drawing inspiration from nature. Consider serving a tennis serve as an example. Rather than serving the same spot or switching it up every time, take a peek at your watch. Serve to the right if 030 appears on the second hand. Serve left if it states 3160. Step six, understand the regulations completely. Understand the regulations completely. If you get mired in foul play or rule violations, you furthermore being completely aware of the regulations is the greatest method to identify instances of cheating by others and to know exactly what resources and tactics you have available to you. Knowing the rules by heart provides you an immediate advantage over the opponent, whether you're playing a game or entering a contest. Step seven. To get better at the bigger game, practice the little talents one at a time. Helping to get better at the bigger game, practice the lesser talents one at a time. Consider the game of poker, for instance. While playing a lot of poker is a fantastic way to practice, skilled players understand that in order to improve, they must pay close attention to every aspect of the game. One day they might study when to bluff, how to calculate card odds on the spot, and the next day they might study what cards to fold or play. Gaining mastery over individual skills will significantly raise your overall gain. There are practice problems available for many games, such as chess, which are specific game-like scenarios that you have to sort out quickly. This is why drills are so important in sports. Consider how you'll utilize this specific talent to win a game rather than merely practicing the move over and over. Playing video games or simply challenging yourself is a terrific method to develop abilities for complex jobs like these on your own time. Keep in mind that no objective can be accomplished quickly. Although getting better is difficult and we all want it to happen as soon as possible, try not to lose hope if you are not making the progress you would like to. Step eight, maintain regular and efficient communication with all of your teammates. Find the maintain regular and efficient communication with all of your teammates. The most productive teams are the ones that converse the most. It's important to stay in continual contact regarding your opponent's movements, your location, any changes in your strategy, and whether you need assistance or support. Never think you're better off being by yourself or pretending to be secretive by remaining silent. Top teams maintain communication. Inform your teammates if you discover something new or helpful. Step nine, engage in mental exercises or engage in some mental exercises. In a well-known Tour de France photo, Lance Armstrong, who had just ascended an incredibly massive peak, is shown leading and watching a competitor close in on him. Armstrong swiftly puts on a cheerful, easy-going smile despite his exhaustion and turns to confront his opponent, whose face is equally worn out. The cyclist loses heart since he thinks Lance is not at all exhausted, and Armstrong triumphs handily. And to obtain a psychological edge in every game, you can use the same strategies Remain composed and calm as your adversaries falter. Play any game you choose, but always keep your poker face up. You just display feelings that you want your opponent to see. That's all for today's video. Even if you successfully pull off a bluff in a game, don't tell your opponents about it. For this reason, in a card game, you never reveal your hand unless it is required of you.
the unable to distinguish between sincerity and bluster. Don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button to avoid missing any new videos from our channel. Thanks for watching and see you all soon.